Hello lovely people, <laughs> how are you all doing today? I hope you're all well. I am well, I'm a little bit, again, uh, just because I've done a quick mad dash out and home. Uh, yeah, more, I'll gather your thoughts, more of that in a second. Um, our weather has cooled quite a bit to what is now normal for our time of year. It sort of still feels like summer uh, during the daytime, mostly bright, warm, <laughs> as you can tell. Where's my fan? <laughs> I've got my fantastic fan that I bought. Um, this fan has been brilliant. <sighs> it's, um, it's paper with little bamboo slats. I didn't realise at the time when I bought it, but then I saw later on the Maker's Mark, it's nowhere, nowhere, very posh. I didn't pay posh money for it, I picked it up in the charity shop for £1.50. And amazingly, it was almost as if I knew it was like a couple of weeks before the first of the heat waves. Anyway, yes, um, so we've cooled down to a normal summer temperature, even though it's not officially summer anymore but it's quite humid as well still i in this part of my little part of london still not getting any rain so still need needing to water the garden but yeah the humidity has gone up now anyway so yeah i just popped out um just a couple of little bits and bobs of shopping now do you remember it was a video i can't remember when it's this year it must have been at some point from June onwards because I was talking about food after I'd made the decision to give up the garden and I was saying it's going to be a bit weird, a bit interesting, a bit, oh, that I'm going to have to start buying veggies. Now, I really do hope <laughs> and intend when I move to get somewhere with a bit of garden space and you know what, no matter how small it is, I am definitely going to you know get some veggies in there but the fact is next year so i really hope to move by the summer so let's say i aim for the spring market with putting my flat on the market and hopefully by then the lease will have come back um generally it takes about three months to complete a sale in the uk from that moment of a buyer saying yes i want it to that moment where you actually hand over the money and the keys. So let's say I, I sell it in March and then the completion is towards the end of June or something. The reason I'm mentioning this is because even though it will be my intention to grow vegetables at my new home, the chances of having a veg garden next year are quite slim, slim to none, uh, because when I move, I was gonna say the priority will be to sort the house out maybe my priority should be the garden and food production the reason my priority would be to get the house sorted out is because i work from home so much but on the other hand oh now i'm thinking aloud i'm confusing myself yeah i just i mean the part part of the issue is i don't know where i'm going to be <laughs> i don't even know what town i'm going to be in i really 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 want to stay in this area as i've said before uh but you know i might not be able to afford it so i might have to leave london anyway because of all that now now to get to my point about this morning um yeah even if i get a little bit of um, a garden going next year. It won't be anywhere near as productive as my allotment garden has been over the years. So I am going to have to buy food and uh, as in veggies. And I was saying in that video that one of the things that concerns me is A, not being able to find organic food. I mean I could sign up to a veg box scheme, that's one option. But two, the affordability, because I think, you know, we're all we're all experiencing this horrible inflation at the moment. Will I even be able to afford organic food? 
and I might have to compromise and I hate that I really really hate it but you know if I don't have the money um, and not because of my lifestyle not because I'm poor but just because we <laughs> we're all gonna be strapped for cash uh, yeah then I'll you know that compromise may have to happen but hopefully you know in other areas I won't compromise anyway so there is a vegetable I'm needing this I'm still calling it summer because I can't let go of summer. I'm going to say summer till the end of September, I think. But there is one vegetable that I have been wanting that I haven't grown this year. I did start a load off and I lost the entire lot to slugs. I could have done a direct sowing later on, but I couldn't get the bed ready because it had turned to concrete. Wah, wah, wah. Boring news now. So I have been... <laughs> cucumber i can't believe i haven't bought a cucumber for years and um i gave some of my cucumber seeds to paul and they've been rampant for him they're always rampant for me i think they've been having one cucumber a day fantastic but yeah i didn't have any this year so i was really pleased to find organic so this has come from my local Lidl, little. Now, at, at the time when I was talking about that whole, you know, buying my own veg, I have to be careful how I hold this so I don't look rude. Sorry, I just, I just caught sight of like. Anyway, blush. Um, at the time when I was talking about, you know, I'm going to have to buy food, veggies. Where can I get organic? Da da da. Price food. And loads of you were mentioning about places. Okay, I don't have an Asda or Morrison's anywhere near me. So that's completely out of the picture. I There is an Aldi, but it's a bus ride away. And it's near to a huge Sainsbury's, which has a much bigger range in terms of the organic. So what I'm going to do at some point is I'm going to go down there one day on the bus do a bit of research, go to both and see what they have to offer and see if it's worth it for me next year. Do I take the bus all the way down there? Um, because that's £3.30 added to the shopping bill. But is it going to be worth it? Otherwise, locally, I've got a little. And a lot of you had mentioned that these places, they do sort of wonky veg boxes. I don't care about wonky veg. I've been growing wonky veg for years. And my stomach ain't got eyes. <laughs> so by the time it hits my stomach, my stomach's not going to go, ooh, it's wonky. I reject it, you know. Um, so yeah, lots of you mentioned that. But I haven't seen any locally. So I don't know, is it just my branch that doesn't, do the wonky veg boxes is it just my branch that doesn't do the organic veg boxes i don't know so what i do know is my local branch tends to in terms of organic because i do go there i go there for things like rice lentils oil um different cheeses you know my kind of like staples so I have over the years kind of spotted what they do by way of organic and they'll do organic onions <laughs> and apparently organic cucumbers but that's kind of it which is really disappointing um anyway so the other disappointment is it's in plastic why is it in plastic I mean I understand because it has to be labeled because it was more expensive so that was the other thing I think it was 56 pence for a regular, you know, pesticide covered cucumber. And I'm not talking about the pesticides because of me, my health, although I do think about that. It's all about the environment, agricultural runoff, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so 56p for the chemical one, 95p for the organic ones it's almost double so yeah there is gonna have to be compromise anyway i've got an organic one yeah i've had a couple they've been really nice what a shame it's in plastic but the other thing that that made me think uh while i was standing there in the queue oh just a really quick little rant 
this shop has been going more and more self-serve over the last couple of years and now there's only two machines two self-serve machines where you can do it with cash all the rest are card only but the two that do cash also do card so you can queue for ages for one of the cash ones and people just keep coming past you i was like oh i wish they'd make them cash only <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, the queues are a nightmare there now. I think recently I was talking about the fact that I'm not um, a morning lark, I'm a night owl. Generally, when I've shopped there, it's been either on my way to the plot, on the way home, so sort of between 10, maybe around 10, 11, or around 4, 5. I wonder if it's worth going there at 8 in the morning when they open or 8 at night before they close. Is it quieter then? Because I feel my stress level is going up. I really nearly lost my <laughs> shizzle the other day because there was... Oh my... Anyway, no, I won't go on it. You all know how I feel about these blimming self-serve machines. But what struck me today was there's always there's always one human being who's running around going, you know, doing the age check thing. So yes, this person is old enough to buy a bottle of wine or there's always something going wrong. So there's always a lass running around trying to attend to all the different machines. And at the same time, she's the one handing out plastic bags oh can I get a bag can I get a bag it's like what I don't understand is oh it's just what I mean never mind the environment although you know that's where my passion is but the bag is 20p I think getting a couple of bags why are people going shopping without shopping bags why would you go to the shops and not take a bag. It's like you get to the shop and you suddenly go, oh, I don't have a bag. You, I don't get it. I just don't get how you can go shopping and not, you wouldn't go shopping without your wallet, would you? I mean, I think most people wouldn't go shopping without their phone these days, <laughs> judging by people in the queue on their phones. So I don't know why people can't get into their heads that when you leave the house, you take your wallet, your front door keys, and a bag. Or five bags, if you're doing a big shop, whatever it is. So yeah, that's just one of my... Okay, rant over. <laughs> Go and get that chopped up and scoffed in a minute. So look, this is just a random eclectic chat today. I've got all my little scraps and notes to remind me of things I wanted to chat about. Um, something else I was saying the other day wasn't it just write write my thoughts down quickly when I have them I try to organize it into different notebooks dotted around the flat but and it's not a big flat but more often than not it's a scrap of paper anyway I'll come to the scraps of paper in a minute I had a really lovely card from Maureen oh Maureen look it's still summer in the card Thank you, lovely. And she was asking, so remember I showed you this little photo book that my sister had made up for me to, as a little kind of reminder of our, if I go and fuzz it, of our trip. I love this one she got of, this is some of the stained glass in Canterbury. Isn't that beautiful? And I also love, because it really gives you an idea of the scale. Do you remember the scrap wood war horse that's in the grounds that I showed you in the video that that that's me filming it <laughs> so my sister photographed so there you can really see the scale of it beautiful incredible so yeah gorgeous gorgeous little memento she did beautiful photographs got that one of the fishing boats in Whitstable so Maureen was asking where my sister got it, where she had it made up, etc. So I think it's an app, <laughs> but it just says on the back, 
free prints photo books. So I think free prints is one of these apps. I've seen them advertised from time to time. Do your own checking out. Uh, and I think it's one of those things where you can get 20 free prints, so photographic prints, each month. I don't think, I think it's like a free subscription, maybe you pay postage, I'm not sure. But one of the other things they do are these little photo books. And it's such a lovely little memento. And my sister was saying she often makes these little books up when she has a trip or what have you. And I think it's such a lovely idea because how many of us now, I mean, I don't do it with my phone, my phone isn't capable, but most of us, our photos are in our phones. So for me, my photos are all in the laptop, in the computer, backed up. <laughs> or I need to do another backup soon. But yeah, they're just locked inside our gadgets and we don't have them around our homes. We don't have them, you know, like I've got my little group of pictures on the mantelpiece, not changing any of those out. But wouldn't it be nice to, you know, like I could have one on my bureau, a little frame, um, and you can just change the picture once a month by getting them printed. So yeah, I think it's free, or you, you can get a certain amount each month free. Uh, over and above that you pay, I think, I think, I think. I'm basing all this on memories of um, adverts that I've seen. And I think there may be postage, but it's quite, minimal. So yeah, it's a lovely idea. Let's get our photos, let's get our beautiful images, our beautiful happy memories. Let's get them out of our phones and out of our computers and get them put up around our home to look at and enjoy and smile at every day. Maureen, I hope that answered your question. Oh, this is completely random. This is Okay, this is the nerd in me. You've heard me talk um, before about my local Facebook group. I'm actually in two. Just because my village borders, I'm very close to the border of a, another village. So I'm in both. And I've talked about how great they are and it's, it, that, so check, you know, check out in your area if you've got one, because they're a great place for, well, there's loads of lost and found cats and dogs on there. And it's so lovely when, when you, when you see the reunite, reunion story, reunited, the reunion story, brilliant. But it's really useful for, it's like a sort of a mini version of free cycle, so folk often advertise on there. I've got this, I don't want it, does someone want it? Brilliant. Adverts for local events, not adverts per se, but just someone posting to say, oh, you know, there's a craft sale this weekend at, you know, St. Such and Such's church. You know, there's a classical music evening happening at, you know, you get the idea. Um, and lovely, lovely, lovely last year, and I've now got it in my computer because I want to start working through it. During Black History Month last year, or was it two years ago? I told you I'm rubbish with time these days. No, it was in lockdown. It was last year. During Black History Month, someone on in the group uh, started, they did a daily post every day for Black History Month of a black writer, a bit of a pricey about the novel and a bit of uh, what I really loved was a sort of a historic, historical sort of contextualising of that book, its impact, that sort of thing. Really, really interesting. As each day came up, because I'm a book nerd apart from anything else, I was thinking, yep, yeah, read it, read it, ooh, haven't read it. And particularly with the slightly more recent authors, because I'm so out of touch with modern authors and new books, that was great. It's like, oh, yay, some more authors to add to my list. So I loved it. And I thought, you know what? That's someone really taking their time to think about this, to, to share that with our community. You know, it's, they're not getting any glory for it, um, other than people saying, thank you so much for doing this, it's brilliant. So that was last year. 
and recently <laughs> this is so nerdy do I need to do my hands thing again I think it's I think it's to do with the light oh, in the flat because the cam oh it's really annoying <laughs> the oh <laughs> really annoying hang on I need <laughs> it's all going so well today isn't it um it's because I'm being too nerdy my camera's like can't cope with nerdy anyway yeah super nerdy um in the last couple of weeks someone else has done a daily post you're gonna laugh oh my dad would be so proud of me for nerding on this because it's one of his nerdinesses too is one of our local bus routes, a bus route per day. Now, some of our bus routes go from here all the way into central London. They're long bus routes. One of them is the one I used to take to work in the morning. Well, it took me most of the way to work and then I had to get a second bus. But it's, depending on the time, of day, it's a good hour, this bus route. Um, but I loved it because it was sort of giving the history of how the route has changed over the years. And what I really loved was um, they talked about, he, he, it was a bloke posting, talked about the route and the sort of landmarks along the way, some sort of historical bits to look out for on the way. I was like, this is brilliant. This is like a free tour guide. <laughs> You know, actually, I, I'm kind of joking. Well, look, it is quite nerdy, isn't it, to get into bus routes. But it's one of those things. I mentioned it in a video yonks ago when I was up in town in St. James's and I was talking about the, I think it was probably a number nine. It used to be my local bus when I was living in Kensington to get into the centre of town. Um, is that, you know, you can pay a small fortune for the tour buses. I don't know, they're probably like 20 quid a ticket, I'm not sure. Uh, whereas you can just hop on a bus uh, for £1.65 and do all your sightseeing from a bus in London. The number nine route is a great route for sightseeing. If you want to come back, it will be £3.30. And the other great thing in London as well is if you have to change buses, um, for instance, there was, there was, it was the route I was planning for the morning of going and catching my train to go down to Arty Teapots for my sister. The local trains weren't running, engineering works or something. And it's such a short route, but I would have had to take three buses, crazily. If I'd done all, all the changes within an hour, if my first bus was 20 minutes, my second bus was 20 minutes, so we're at the 40, 45, maybe even 50 minute mark before I get the third one. Even if the third one took two hours, it would all be charged as one bus for £1.65. Because quite often in London, you are probably going to have to take, if it's a long way you're going, probably a couple of buses. But so long as that change happens within the first hour, there's no extra charge. Fab. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. There's another nerdy side to me. I think you know I, well, you know I like trains. Trains and buses, huge part of my life. Ah, right, complete change of subject. I told you this is all random today. Um, yes, yeah, some of my nighttime wanderings are not actually out there wandering but wandering is as in give me something to watch to distract me from the fact that I'm awake and a new series has started I think there's probably four episodes uh, to watch available to watch so I, I watch quite a lot on the computer through the free hubs and this is a channel 5 one so I think it's the hub is called My Five. So I've watched one. Um, can't wait to watch the next ones. Although you're all now wonky. Why are you wonky? It's because I whacked you over. Um, yeah, I can't wait to watch the next ones. But I think I think I might leave them until the winter, because at the moment 
while they're still light enough, the day is just about long enough to pack in other stuff. It might be a really nice winter treat for say, I don't know, by six o'clock in the evening, it's pitch black outside, lashing rain. I forgot what lashing rain sounds like. Then yeah, get on the hub and watch. So it's a new series that's being presented by Griff Riss, Griff Riss Jones. Um, you'll know him, many of you will know him from Alas Smith and Jones. That's when I first knew of Griff Riss Jones. Um, oh, sorry, I'm saying um a lot. What was the, not the nine o'clock news. So he and Mel Smith and Pamela Stevenson and Rowan Atkinson. Oh my goodness, the gorilla, the gorilla sketch with David Atten, when he says David bloody Attenborough. Anyway, that's a big digression. So Griffiths Jones is doing a new travel show. And in the introduction, because I've only seen the first episode, he mentioned, and I thought, gosh, you're right. He was talking about all the different travel shows that have been over the years, all the various sort of documentaries from other countries. And we've had so little from this country. And I thought, yeah, he's absolutely right. So he's doing a six part, I believe, taking his time to go across the whole country. He's doing a travel documentary program all about Canada. I'm delighted. Because I have friends in Canada. Hello, friends in Canada. There are quite a lot of you. Um, gosh, when I first left university, my first job, I made really good friends with a lass from Canada. I always remember the name because I always thought it sounded funny. Winnipeg. I was sort of thinking of Winnie the Pooh with clothes pegs. So it's really lovely to start to kind of get a look at this amazing country. I've read lots about Canada over the years, but only really kind of above the Arctic Circle, so that top shelf of my books, that sort of Arctic exploration, the Northwest Passage, the impact of the Hudson Bay Company, uh, Yukon Territory, lots of that sort of reading, but not really about, about kind of, <laughs> normal people as in those who aren't living off grid in a really freezing cold place although i know it gets freezing cold even in your towns and cities so yeah i'm delighted he's he's doing this series um otherwise i think the only other i think the only other documentaries i've seen there was one it might even have been a pbs because i can get pbs as well that was, I think it was called A Year in the Wild in Canada. And that was beautiful. Amazing, amazing, amazing landscapes, beautiful wildlife. And that, obviously that taps right into all the stuff I love. But again, it's not really about the people and the towns and the cities and how people actually live and work. Um, and the other one was a documentary. It was only an hour long. I really wanted more. And it was about the trans-Canadian railway. I was mentioning that in another video, I'm coming back to one of my nerdy things about railways, that there is this trans-Canadian railway you can take, as in do it as one trip, but it's fiercely expensive. It's like, it's like the Orient Express of Canada. Uh, you know, it's proper first-class luxury travel. I'd love to do that route, but I don't need first-class and I don't need luxury. I want to do ordinary across. Anyway, so yeah, I'm I'm absolutely chuffed that Griffiths Jones is doing this uh, this series. The first episode he starts he's starting in the east in Newfoundland. Got to get the pronunciation correct, Newfoundland. And it kind of blew my mind. He he was starting off at I think the most easterly point, a rock. <laughs> with a, uh, a lighthouse. So he went there to look across the Atlantic back towards home, England. And, or is he Welsh? Griff. Griff Riss Jones. He's got to be Welsh. Sorry everybody in Wales, I'm really sorry for that accent thing. Um, 
And while he was there, there, there was an English couple who were just starting their Canadian adventure. And this is the bit that blew my mind. He said, where he was standing on the edge of Canada, looking towards the UK, he said, right now, I am closer to Birmingham, England, than I am to the west coast of Canada. It's just, yeah, like I said, blew my mind. I don't think in the UK, unless we've actually been and travelled there, I don't think we have any concept, really, of how vast Canada is. You know, even how vast the United States are, in terms of sort of, you know, oh, let's go to the States and let's hop around each each um, state. I, I did this for many years. I thought of each state almost like we have counties in the UK. It freaked me out with Canada when he was talking about Newfoundland to say that the area, the square mileage of Newfoundland would fit six, six whole United Kingdoms in. Anyway, so I saw the first one. It was absolutely brilliant. I'm just, that's my scrap now for recycling. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Based on that first one, I highly recommend having a look, uh, especially those of us in the UK who, you know, we have our pen pals in Canada or we've had friends, Canadian friends who we've lived with in London for a year or two and worked with and then they've gone back home and we sort of can't quite visualise what home is for them. So yeah, highly recommend it. One of the other things, I just, <laughs> I'm doing my, okay, you know what, this, this and then that and then that can wait. Um, yes, another uh, another bit of a troll round. I found recently with Telly. Hang on, another glug. I've always watched and really enjoyed. I love an old-fashioned crime show, so I love my Poirot and the Miss Marples and that sort of thing. I've always really enjoyed Endeavour and Morse and Lewis. I've done it in the correct order, even though Endeavour comes was made after Lewis. I've always really enjoyed those because it's so much... Um, I like literary clues. In, so, like, Lewis and Morse is always a kind of a, a classical clue, whether it's literature or classical history or music. I like that. It's kind of a bit intellectual bit like me <laughs> um but I also I was really into things like CSI and Law and Order all the various different spin-offs and a couple of months ago when was it no it was actually it was when I had Covid and it was after the first, the first week was horrid, I was in bed. But then the second week, I was kind of up, but ugh, couldn't do anything. And I stumbled on a show called, and it's been out for ages, loads of you will have seen it. It's a show called Criminal Minds. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting concept. So it's a crime show, it's, you know, solve a crime. But the premise of it is that the, the group of people we follow they're from something called the Behavioural Analysis Unit. So it's using sort of behaviour and psychology to, to try to basically work out who, who's done this crime and how can we catch them using their behaviour and psychology. So I thought that, you know, I was like, ooh, that's interesting, that's a bit different from other crime shows I've seen. I'm thoroughly getting into it. And then, and I, I ended up watching loads and loads. Um, I sort of binge watched. And it got into about the third series or so. And I just started to really massively go off it because, now I wasn't, when I say binge watching, I wasn't watching 10 episodes a day, but maybe sort of two or three over the course of the whole day. And then I left it alone for a while and then I came back to it. But then I kind of, I was like, you know what? It doesn't sit well with me anymore because 
so often, put it this way, so often the victim was a woman. It's kind of always the way in these crime shows, isn't it? But what what had happened as the series were progressing, I think they were trying to be more and more dramatic, you know, get the audience figures, whatever it is. But the violence was getting like more and more gratuitous. The the imagery, so instead of it just being like just, not just, pardon my phrase there, but rather than we see a body that has been killed and we might see a leg and they talk about it and then they go and fight, find the perpetrator, they started showing the scenes of the crime happening and it was just, it was such violent torture, nasty. it was just, it was, so, it just got so vile and like I said gratuitous, I thought I don't want to watch this, this is horrible, this is just so, it was just horrible, so violent and it was always women and it started to play on my mind anyway so I was like you know what, I, I don't need this. I don't need to watch such graphic hideousness against women, against men. I don't need to see that against anyone. So yeah, I ditched it. Um, and, and I don't know if it, that kind of put some seed, but I then noticed when I was watching reruns of all the other kind of, you know, the CSIs and what have you, that I'd stopped enjoying watching those either because it just kept being about, anyway, you get the gist of what I'm saying. But then I did find a new crime thing to watch, which I've known about it for a while, but I always thought, that's not gonna work. What are you talking about? That's wrong. <laughs> So uh, I'm sure many, many, many of you are familiar with the character of Maigret, the writer Georges Simenon, um, and I'm sure there have been loads of adaptations over the years, but this is the most recent, I'm not sure when it's from, um, when they were filmed, in the last 10 years or so, but the reason I was reluctant to watch it is because Maigret was played by Mr Bean. Oh, we've come full circle. Oh, I love it when that happens. It's talking about Griffiths Jones, not when I've got news, Rowan Atkinson. So Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson, plays May Gray. And, you know, I think Rowan Atkinson is a great, a great comic actor. I've absolutely adored all the Blackadder series. And I'm sure I'm not alone in saying that I cried like a baby at in that last episode, oh, I'm getting emotional thinking about it, in that last episode of Blackadder Goes Forth, set during the First World War when they go over the top. I mean, what a way to go out with a fantastic comedy show than to make us all sob because suddenly it was like, oh, that's a bit real. So I've always thought he was an absolutely fantastic actor, comic actor, um, but then he did, there was a police, show like set in a police station very silly I was like oh, no too much and then the whole Mr Bean thing I can't I can't stand that character I can't stand the bumbling idiot character I think partly because we know so far in advance what is going to happen all the disasters that I just I said, oh, yeah I can't can't stand it and so because of that I'd resisted watching Maigret for ages, but here's the thing. He's brilliant in it. It's just, it was an absolute revelation. So I have seen two. I think there are two more for me to search for and find. I can't remember even where I found them. I think I've bookmarked one of them. But anyway, yeah, he's absolutely brilliant in it because it's so... The character is very quiet and thoughtful anyway, which is why I couldn't match him up with it. But he plays it so subtly. It's so subtle. Um, it, it's, how to put it, it's, it's a very internalised role. Uh, it's a very, the character is very internal anyway, and he plays that 
but there's just enough that he, he just gives out enough from either expression or body language that we, the viewer, get it, get it completely. Um, so brilliant performance. I also loved it because it's it's got my vintage vibe going on. So I've got an itchy schnozzle again today. Um, yeah, there's a there's a proper vintage vibe going on because they're all set. There's a little fly as well. I think it's sort of early fifties. So you know the clothes are great. The uh, the internal shots, the interior internal. The interior shots, the furnishings, brilliant. The one I saw, the first one I saw is all set in Montmartre. So there's this just wonderful sense of place, of Paris, because of course I'm a total Francophile and Parisophile, if that's a thing. So yeah, I think the, the way it's, sh it's shot beautifully, it's played beautifully, and each episode is it's about two hours i can't remember whether that's with adverts or not because the thing is with all these free hubs to watch tv shows on you can't fast forward through the adverts that's the only snag but hey they've got to make their money i'm watching it for free i don't mind some adverts but yes yeah, so it's about two hours long so the reason i'm mentioning that is because it's just given the space to play out it's not if it was done in an hour it'd be too rushed so it's got this wonderful slow tempo moments of action but generally the 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 tempo that they filmed it and let it play out is a wonderful reflection also of may gray's character it's got so much going for, for it it's set in france beautiful scenery it's got a vintage vibe with all the you know the cars the clothes great shots of paris and the performances are i'll just get something else the performances are absolutely his in particular is glorious even though i've seen those two i'll probably watch them again at some point now i'm aware i've been rattling on for ages so a quick quick finish is i've got a thank you to say to angela who messaged me to say Opla. there's some soap coming but it may not say that it's from me Angela it came I'll just show you I've opened it up a bit it's actually a shampoo bar she wanted to send and it's from this company called Future what's it called Future Positive I can't see the company name on any bits anyway uh, so it was to send me uh, a new shampoo bar to try. This one is called Lime Cooler. Mmm. <laughs> smells. Oh my goodness. As soon as I opened the box, the scent that came out was like spot on. All my favourite, favourite smells. There's patchouli, there's sandalwood, there's cedarwood. It's all those gorgeous dark notes that I absolutely love some people love all the kind of top notes the zingy citrusy i love those base notes those beautiful woods and the kind of dark rich smells open the box gorgeous um so ostensibly it was for the the shampoo bar but also there was a packet of swizzles in here i've scoffed them i can't show them to you <laughs> but also all these fabulous little samples to try so there's a little one little little bit of soap to try isn't that a cute way of sending things to one's customers and then i love i loved all the names these are all soap white witch mm. yeah wild mint yum but i think this was my favorite Rook and Raven. Look, black soap. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that one is... It says scent characteristics. I love that on it. It says a dark, mystifying blend of sweet Sicilian orange and a, a dry down of aged patchouli and sandalwood. Oh, so that's a cutie. And then there's the warrior. <laughs> 
Warrior Princess, that's me. What's it? Oh, that's beautiful. It says a salty wooden warship misted with sea spray is the scent. I love their descriptions. Because how do you describe smell? It's like when people say to me, um, okay, so for example, a lot of people outside of the UK who've not grown broad beans before, and there's me over the years going on about how gorgeous they are, and they say, what do they taste like? Well, they taste like beans. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, scent smells. And this one is, it's the scent of tarred rope, Israeli figs, citrus fruits, rich spices and rare frankincense and amber wrapped in sailcloth. Do you know what, with this company, I think it's called Future Positive, I don't know who you have writing your descriptions, but I hope they're also writing a novel on the side because what gorgeous, fabulous use of language. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, oh, and this one, last one, Elijah's Comfort. Let's see what Elijah's Comfort is all about. Scent characteristics. Sweet Sicilian orange, ooh, freshly harvested Elang Elang blossoms, lemongrass sticks, it's tiny writing, and geranium leaves with a hint of English tea roses. It's such a it's such a double delight to receive this, Angela. Thank you so much because you know. I, I often, I'm often asked like, oh, well, not often asked. I get comments with people saying to me, you know, why do you deprive yourself? You live in deprivation. Don't you miss this? Don't you miss that? Don't you miss the other? I do not live in deprivation. And there are a few things which to me are such, they're such luxury, joy, whatever, but they're affordable, especially when they're a gift. Things like soap, I'm going to use it I use soap all the time. Obviously, I do. I'm clean. But if it can be a little bit special so that it's not... So getting clean isn't just a boring, random act you have to do each day. But it's a moment of joy from this simple act of washing. Then why not? Why not let oneself be in that moment of joy? And little things like these descriptions, the words that have been used to describe the scent... That's also a moment of joy. So between soap and words, I'm not deprived at all. <laughs> mm, mm. Angela, I can't wait. I can't wait to start using. The thing is, <laughs> oh dear. I just, just before this gift arrived, I'd started a new bar of soap. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, I just started a new bar of soap in the bath and now I'm like, shall I put that bar I just started? Shall I let it dry out and wrap it up and put it away again so I can start in one of these? No, I'm going to be good. Delayed gratification always makes the gratification more sweet. Crikey, I did not mean to yak on so long today and I've still got scraps of notes of other stuff I wanted to chat about. That's a completely random, eclectic chat today. I've enjoyed sitting here chatting with you. Thank you, as always, for letting me come into your living room <laughs> and talk at you. I know a load of you talk back to me whilst I'm chatting. I love that idea. So yeah, thank you for letting me be in your living room or your kitchen or your laundry room, wherever it was today. It's always appreciated. For now though, I'm going to say cheerio to you all. Stay well, stay happy. Find those little, little tiny moments of joy in each day and wallow in them for a few minutes. All those little moments of joy add up to a big hole. All right, lovelies, see you again really soon, I hope. Probably ought to be in the garden. Until then, cheerio.